Hello! In this video we're going to continue talking about our understanding of the history of atomic structure, our many different answers to the one simple question, what is stuff made of? Here's where we are so far. So a long, long time ago, many, many hundreds of years ago, uh, the first person to answer this question was Kanada Rishi, and his answer to what is stuff made of, he said that stuff is made of indivisible particles that he called paramanu. And then a couple hundred years later, in Greece, Democritus said stuff is made of indivisible particles, and he called them atomos. They're basically saying the same thing. They're hundreds of years apart in different parts of the world. They didn't talk to each other. They had the same idea. Cool. And then, many, many hundreds of years later, John Dalton is the first person to say, oh, I have evidence to say that stuff is made of indivisible particles. So these three people all have basically the same idea. John Dalton was the first person to have evidence based on experiments for this same idea. So that's where we are right now. We think that stuff is made of particles, we're going to call them atoms in English, and they look like this. They look like spheres. They are indivisible. You cannot cut them. There is nothing smaller. That's what we understand stuff is made of. Then in the late 1800s, J.J. Thompson, who lived in England, started to do some experiments with a cathode ray tube. This was a pretty popular tool to experiment with at the time, and you may even have heard of this tube. Um, if you've ever seen a TV that is not a flat screen, like the one on the left, these are called CRTs, cathode ray tubes. So the technology behind this television uh, is the same technology that J.J. Thompson was experimenting with in England in the late 1800s. Here's what it looks like on the right. So you can see there's a glass tube like a fancy light bulb, but there's more stuff inside. Here's a diagram so we can get kind of a better sense. So over here, we have two, uh, two electrical parts. There's a cathode. The cathode is negative. Here's the anode. The anode is positive, and there is a beam, right? a beam of light that is uh, that shines from the cathode through the anode. And over here on the right side, this uh, edge of the light bulb is painted in such a way that when the cathode ray hits the paint, it glows. So you can see where the cathode ray is hitting because of the phosphorescent paint. All right, so. When you shoot something, when you shoot a beam, right, through this cathode ray tube, we expect it to go straight through, right? That's pretty much what would make sense. But when we add these positive and negative plates, right, this plate here is positively charged, this plate here is negatively charged, what happens is that the cathode ray gets deflected. And it gets deflected, in this case, up, but it gets deflected towards the positive plate. Now, why might that happen? Well, if you remember that opposite charges attract, if the cathode ray gets bent towards the positive plate, that means that the cathode ray has a negative charge. That's important piece of information number one. But then something else cool happened. Instead of a cathode ray, let's shoot something else through this tube. Let's shoot a beam of hydrogen ions. Now we know that hydrogen ions are the smallest atom there is. Right? There is nothing smaller than a hydrogen atom. Um, we also know that hydrogen atoms have a positive charge. So which direction do you think that the hydrogen atoms will travel? Will they go straight through, will they go up, or will they go down? what happens is that the hydrogen atoms got bent towards the negative plate. That makes sense because the positive hydrogen got attracted to the negative plate and bent down. But what's really interesting here is the amount of deflection. Look how much the cathode ray got deflected and look how much the hydrogen ions got deflected. Now think about pushing something out of the way pushing something light versus pushing something heavy. If you push something heavy, it's not going to move as much as if you push something light. So the fact that the hydrogen ions got bent only a little bit, but the cathode ray got bent a lot, that turns out to be really important. 
Based on this experiment, here's what Thompson concluded. Conclusion number one, cathode rays have a negative charge. We know that because the cathode rays got deflected towards the positive plate in the cathode ray tube. Conclusion number two, cathode rays are not light. They're made of particles. We know this because light does not have a charge and light cannot have a charge. The only thing that can have any kind of charge, positive or negative, is a particle. So cathode rays are made of particles. And conclusion number three, these particles have less mass than hydrogen, which is the smallest atom. This is a really big deal. It doesn't seem like much, but remember how we used to think that atoms were indivisible? You couldn't have anything smaller than an atom? Well, here comes the cathode ray tube, and Thompson is, is realizing that actually there is something smaller than an atom. This is a big deal. So based on this really crazy new information, here's what Thompson decides stuff is made of. He lived in Britain, and in Britain they have this dessert called plum pudding. It's not pudding like we think of in America. Uh, it's more like a cake, and you can see all the little dark spots, uh, which would be little bits of dried plums. He named his model of the atom the plum pudding model, and here's what it looks like. These negatively charged particles he called electrons, and they're smaller than an atom, and he decided that these electrons were kind of scattered evenly throughout the atom, and the rest of the atom is this positive stuff. Right? We know that atoms are overall neutral, so if there's a negative piece, there has to be a positive piece. So we have negative electrons scattered in a positively charged stuff, the rest of the atom. If Thompson lived in America and had never heard of plum pudding, I think he would have called this the chocolate chip cookie model of the atom. And so based on J.J. Thompson's experiments in the late 1800s, now we know that there are electrons.